So welcome everyone, I'm Christina DeRoche, I'm the director of the Museum of Art, and I'm delighted to welcome Emily Trenholm, who will be speaking about her collages. Um, Emily is an adjunct professor of art at the University of New Hampshire, and previously, previously served as an adjunct professor of art at Southern Maine Community College in Brunswick. Her paintings and collages are, thrown, are shown throughout the Seacoast region, and she most recently exhibited at the Lewis Gallery in Portland, Maine. So welcome, Emily. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so these works um, are paintings, and there is a bit of collage in them too. I think of them, I guess, mostly as paintings and drawings. Um, so they were completed in 2020, um, last year in a location behind my house. I was working from the stream um, that runs sort of in the woods behind where I live. <clears throat> and there was so much happening during that time and it was like very emotional, you know, very emotional period. Um, so I found sort of solace like in this area where like I was working from rushing water. Um, there's, you know, a lot of I think I began these paintings in the springtime, and there's just a lot of water moving through. Uh, so that sort of rapid movement um, just captivated me, and I began drawing. So before that period, I had um, not really been working as regularly. I have two boys, and <laughs> we were just talking about. Um, the first one was born in 2013, so I. It was really important to me that I be with them and raise them, um, and so that's what I did. And I did teach at SMCC on the side, one class each semester um, for as an outlet. But with the boys, um, we really spent so much time outside exploring the woods. Um, in the property that we live on, and I, I think I tended to draw in my head, even though I wasn't making work, I was always thinking about it and drawing what I saw in front of me and shapes, like in my mind. <laughs> and then once I got to this point where, um, because of the pandemic, my husband was home um, and working from home, and we had the boys at home, but he was able to watched them while I just went out to the stream and sort of just got in the zone and was able to make a significant amount of work. Um, and it really, uh, you know, I, it opened up my practice again. Um, in the past, I've used oil paint and now these are, this is acrylic and wash and watercolor. And that was freeing for me too, to have this somewhat of a break and then um, come back into painting um, with a new medium and a new way of describing form. Um, but I think parent, being, becoming a parent really did change my work quite a bit. Um, but yeah, drawing was a really wonderful way for me to begin working again and describing form and then the color came back in and then the collage as well, as I was sort of playing around with these like looser shapes. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, there's, there's a lot more, but uh, um, are there any questions? Um, yes. What inspires your use of like non-natural color in your nature pieces? Like that one in particular. Right. Yeah. Um, so when I, uh, so I work on location, like, um, painting from observation, and when I'm there, I, I take a while just to sit and sort of be present, and, and, um, the color comes to me depending on, um, what I see, but also, I think, how I, I'm feeling, and so, um, I'm realizing that is, um, where that color really comes from, and, um, so a lot of it has to feel with my, it has to do with um, my emotional response to the landscape. Mm -hmm. Do you work in the winter outside? 
I do. Yeah. So last winter I did, and it was relatively mild. So I go out on, you know, when it's thirty degrees and work in the snow. And um, I did several drawings of the of the trees and tree shapes um, last winter, and some painting. But I feel like the drawings are more successful, maybe because they're um, they're quicker to complete. But usually when I'm working, I will create one piece in a single sitting, which is usually like five hours, five or six hours. I mean, many, uh, many people enjoy working outdoor, working from nature, mm -hmm. or either city or a, a major environment. Right. And they all find that as part of the necessary and their creative process. Some people even say clearly, nature is the best teacher. I think I am one of the person working in nature. Um, I wonder what what is the nature to you? Obviously, the strain you are working um, from is not a particular strain. Is the way you find inspiration from that particular um, um, subject? you say something about um, what's nature or the work process related to nature? Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't see myself necessarily as an abstract painter. Um, I, it is important for me to have something in front of me to look at, to make work from, uh, at least to begin with. <laughs> and so I find that nature does that for me and it creates a structure um, of shapes for me to um, sort of work with and problem solve and figure out how these parts come together to create a composition. So it, I guess it allows me the, the right problems that I need to, to face. I don't, um, it's, working outside is like, it's a, I feel really comfortable there, and I'm an outdoorsy person, so that's really where I feel the most free to let my work um, <laughs> Yeah. Thanks. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how you, um, because you are moving away, you're starting with something concrete, and you're kind of extrapolating from that. How do you choose your view or what do you respond to because obviously these are not exact replications or you're not trying to paint exactly what you're seeing. So how do you sort of frame out and determine, like choose that spot? Yeah, it's hard to describe it. And I've heard a lot of artists try to describe this, but it's really this feeling and it's a gut response, I think, to, um, uh, for me, it's the particular, in, in this situation, it was the movement of the water mm -hmm. and then the rocks on the sides of the stream and how they interacted with each other. Um, and every time I would walk out and work, it, there was always something new to see, and that was exciting too. Um, yeah. So, does that answer your question? Yeah, 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 it does. Just yeah. sort of thinking about it. what influences your choice of where to paint. Right. Yeah, it, it's not, I, I tend to paint at the same locations. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, the stream behind my house and this specific area where the water, um, there was like a few waterfalls that were small, but the waterfalls provided that movement and the rush of the water. Um, I think I gravitate towards more complex, like um, structural problems, like rather than like a painting a field with trees, like in the distance. To me, that that doesn't excite me as much as um, a massive like branches or mm -hmm. um, does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm really interested in the shapes. I think. Okay. Really? 
have you always been um, kind of gravitated towards this tonal, somewhat um, abstracted form, or has this been like a, a realization that you've come to gradually throughout your journey? <laughs> yeah, it's it's taken a, a long time, I think. So I was a BFA student at UNH here, and when I was studying uh, with Brian and the other wonderful professors, um, <laughs> I was painting portraits, um, large, very large um, portraits and self-portraits. Um, and then I, had, I took a, a few years off before I went to graduate school at BU, and there I um, really worked with my color, and I went out to the city, and it wasn't the same as Maine. You know, I had never lived in a city before. It was a great experience, but it was it was too much. So I did a bunch of outdoor like landscape paintings, but then <clears throat> ended up bringing my bringing plants that my professor had in the hallways. Um, I brought those plants into my studio and created this like indoor um, sort of like greenhouse type space and worked from the plants. Um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, um, I just have a comment. I, I was a little bit late, so I apologize I missed the beginning of your talk. Um, but hearing you, you talk a little bit about working from nature and, and that piece that's behind you sounds like it came from the stream mm -hmm. around your house. And, it, and I really like that. And I don't know that if I was asked without hearing you talk that I would know that it was a landscape, but it feels in some way that it's influenced somehow by the environment. Um, like there's something about it that feels like it, it's more natural than it is constructed. And but it's but it's an environment, like I don't know where that environment. Exists. Like, I don't know if it's surreal or whimsical or otherworldly, but but it like makes me think of all of those things, which is pretty engaging. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any other comments or reflections on Emily's work? I can't see everybody around the corner. But. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Emily. Thank you. Uh, yeah. thank you. Uh, next, we'll be hearing from Beth and his work is over here. And Brett Gamash received his MFA from the University of New Hampshire in 2005 and has been teaching and exhibiting widely since then. He previously served as an adjunct professor of painting at Massachusetts College of Art and is the recipient of numerous awards, and this year received the Blanche E. Coleman Award. So welcome back. Um, and I just wanted to say that I, I feel very grateful to be a part of this show um, alongside Emily and former professors that I've had. I graduated here in 2005. And uh, also very importantly is, is showing alongside my my good friend Jason Bombacci, who uh, lost to cancer this past summer. We were roommates in Italy in the UNH program and uh, had, a, had a nice correspondence in the last few months of his life. Um, and I think of him often as I'm working, uh, and uh, I, should, I should say about four years ago, my wife and I moved to Ipswich, Massachusetts. And it's really become the center of, of my, my work is uh, the is known for their sort of vast wetlands and uh, Crane Beach has these very impressive beach dunes there, uh, which are only accessible by foot. And <clears throat> similar, similar to what Emily mentioned uh, during, during COVID and also the birth of my son, you know, things are very stressful and uh, hiking, for me, this became a place um, to clear my mind. And I would, I would, and I still do, I hike 
with my materials out into the dunes um, as much as an hour or two in, knowing that I have to come back an hour or two. So I, I pack a lunch and really make a, make a day of it, um, you know, the, the five hour block of time. And um, I something about the maybe the metaphor of the ups and downs of the path. Uh, I love the afternoon light there where things get a little bit more high key and colorful, the long shadows. Um, and so it was like undulating hills. I was really intrigued by the forms. Um, but what I what I've noticed is over these past four years that I, I made a composition. And these are rather small. I was also having another show, some larger works, but I found that uh, a lot of the composite or a lot of the locations that I would return to the next season to find them collapsed, a like collapsed dune or uh, a flooded area. Uh, I feel like Ipswich is sort of the front line of, of global warming. It's you really see it. Uh, impact, impact nature, and um, this, you know. So I've been kind of almost recording, thing, doing a similar uh, painting each season to kind of see the effects. And th this has sort of led to a, a project. Um, mentioned the Blanche Coleman Award, and, and uh, I had proposed. Uh, Ipswich is also known for its it's river and estuaries, and I've always wanted to get out on the water to see uh, the wetlands from different angles. And uh, so I put together a boat with the idea of having a studio boat, sort of Monet-like studio boat. And with this, with the grant uh, coming through, I was able to purchase a, an electric engine that has zero emissions and no carbon footprint. So my next sort of. <sighs> When good weather returns, my idea is to get out onto the water to, to start to see the dunes from other angles and, and see the wetlands up close. Um, I think for me also, just in terms of the process, it was very much about the process for me. I, I really, um, I love being in that state of creating. I think all of us sort of get hooked on that, that feeling. And um, Although, I, when I look at my work, it, it, it feels quite uh, conservative in some ways, um, but I, I, I am, um, I feel like I'm taking chances in the moment. I, I, there's a lot of adding and subtracting, and uh, I just love how there's all sorts of surprises in plein air painting that, that doesn't have, that don't happen in the studio, and um, I kind of just try to relax and get into the flow and really let the painting lead me where it needs to go. Uh, so there's a lot of palette life, uh, pretty impasto paint. Um, and I just really love landscape painting because of the, uh, the changes, the tides coming up and going down, things that I didn't anticipate, you know, clouds moving through and light uh, fading. I think the, the idea, I think I'm drawn to that afternoon light as well, is because it it, um, it gives me a sense of urgency. Like the light is going to is going to be it's not going to be there all day, so I have to work very quickly. And, and I like that. I like being sort of in the moment with all my senses heightened. I also think just that teaching has really um, fed my work in, 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 in so many ways, trying to explain color to students. Uh, I've really come to really enjoy the, the mixing process and um, just the sort of the magical quality of color, uh, the way they interact and get kind of neutralize color. And, um, Yeah, I, I feel like that those two things kind of feed each other. I try to bring some of the ideas that I do with my work into my classroom, and the classroom, the energy that the students have kind of feeds my own work. And I would maybe just say lastly, I think becoming a father, um, I, 
it, it sort of opened my eyes a little bit more to how how fragile the world is. And um, you know, I, I'm I don't know what form it will take, but I'm hoping that this green studio boat that, that I'm going to be launching started the launch will somehow share some of the ephemeral beauty that's out there with people um, and maybe in some in some way open other people's eyes. But do you, do you want to be a series that you're using to go out to the viewers? Do you tend to um, have a work one painting at a time or or do you also make sketches or things that you want to return to? Again, we can talk a little bit about is it used? Yeah. Because it takes so long to get out there. Yeah. Um, I would say that I have about, I, have a, I usually have a handful of paintings that I'm working on at one time. Um, and I feel like there's, these are quite, quite fast and small. I think when I started this whole process, the scale was modest, just in terms of, of physically carrying things out back. But as I got more comfortable, I kind of know what time I have to go out there and, and certain routes that I can get back um, and weather situations. I can, I can take larger canvases. So um, I feel like in the, at, the, at the beginning, I was sort of feeling my way through kind of um, not really reproducing what I was looking at, but being honest to what I saw. And now I'm starting to, uh, I guess, exaggerate and sort of um, enhance some of the forms and the undulations. And it's, it's, it's slowly opening uh, to maybe a more abstract or expressive, expressive feel to the paintings. I do, I do go out in all seasons. I really love, um, I don't know, just the, uh, I just feel alive, I guess. That isn't really what it comes down to. And I really like that feeling. Uh, being outside in all the elements just uh, reminds me of a lot. Right, you go. Yeah, it just reminds me, because you used the word urgency. And just a short article, which is kind of all defining the why uh, in relation to brain, which says an um, urgency of um, putting different components together. And I think uh, to a degree that's a, that's a quite an ingredient of the why and all. I think that's a wonderful way to say that. And, um, and I see a little bit more on the work. I know he's your admirer, um, audience has strong influence, who is extremely humble. Um, an Italian living in a small apartment, shared the living room with two sisters. Um, but the, the artwork is incredibly um, rich. Because it's, it, he just painted a few trees and houses. Uh, the, 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 what he touched is simultaneously multiple. And I think the, I think the humble is on more on the least. I think it's very inspiring for many artists who decide to choose this role um, instead of um, big, he do something small. Um, is insignificant about how meaningful it's significant, which I find in some degrees very touching for just a human. And just that's why uh, what I see from the world. Yeah, and I picked up on that same word, urgency. And in looking at the painting on the left, when you were just hearing you describe the, the time and the experience, the looking at those shadows, like that, that purpley gray blue, like I feel like I know that color, like I know that shadow. And I see snow when, when I look at that piece and 
And it makes me think of all the times that I've been walking through a snow path or something, and you catch the sun, and just for a, an instance, you get that really intense shadow, and it is a shape of a color. Like, it's not just a gentle shadow, but it's a real crisp line. And I think that it's just so interesting to hear you talk about capturing, like, feeling the the desire to capture that quickly before the light fades or changes. And then just thinking about how time plays such a different role in different artists' lives. I'm not a painter. And so I think of, of time very differently as a, a sculptor and a woodworker. And so to hear you talk about like the role that time plays is just very interesting. Um, one thing that guarantees me about these pieces and some of your other works that I've seen is your your color palette when you were talking about this kind of golden glow is, is very it's almost it, like it's very three, one with your palette work, clear palette knife work, and two with just the way you're able to convey your yellow tones. Um, and a lot of your work is very interesting because it, it has it almost seems to emit light. In a, in a very fascinating way, it was the way you, for example, I'm looking at the uh, seascape, and I've seen that like one almost perfectly orange rock on the right, and it just it has such a a real um, like kind of gut feeling to me that it almost feels metallic. So I find that is uh, kind of hard to capture as a photographer because you always go for that golden glow. And it never quite comes out how you want it to. So I find your mastery of getting that moment very interesting. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, maybe, it, maybe it kind of goes back to uh, having spent some time in Italy, um, having kind of brought my palette and uh, sort of a, I've kind of taken earth chunks off the palette and uh, have, enjoy the challenge of mixing rounds and grays with color. Mm -hmm. Neutralizing, say purple and yellow together. Um, and, but as I'm working, I, I maybe I, you know, I, the color excites me as I'm working, and I, and I feel like um, I try to put down the things that interest me and excite me as I'm as I'm seeing it. And I think that you know, other painters that come to mind, uh, Matisse is one that I think about a lot, and. Uh, his quote about painting not things but the differences between things. And so I'm constantly kind of visually juggling the different blue, the different blues and browns, and um, kind of trying to touch the whole canvas at once. Kind of, um, I think of it as juggling, sort of juggling color shapes. And your idea for this kind of green boat painting studio, um, was, is this a somewhat newer idea, or is this something that you've wanted to do for a long time and finally had the access to? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've always had the desire to get out on the water. I've always enjoyed that experience. And um, over the last few years, I've started to accumulate the, the pieces necessary. And um, Having this experience has just sort of opened my eyes and made me realize I can't be I can't be polluting the water I can't be I can't be uh, impacting the environment um, and so uh, it sort of all came together um, with, with the help of Brian as well with the letter of recommendation to to get the engine and. Um, yeah, and the, the, also the beauty of the, the electric engine is that it's very quiet. So I can I can approach wildlife from a safe you know a safe distance and and, uh, and not impact the noise you know the, the their habitat as well. So I'm excited to see what's out there. Brett, you are in the landscape. Do you make drawings or do you go straight? Back? Um, I would say it's probably like 
Ninety percent of the time, I'm painting. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, what I what I do find helpful is I'll actually take the paintings back to the studio and like, draw from them, mm -hmm. and that that starts to lead to oh maybe I could ex exaggerate this in the next composition. I feel like uh, I don't know. I think back in the studio, I have the luxury of, of sort of experimenting with, with no time restraints, mm -hmm. and so I can build some value drawings and line drawings, and that sort of generates a, another painting idea for the next time I go out. Mm -hmm. Having said that, though, there are paint, there are drawings sort of under these paintings yeah. often, but not not using charcoal and sort of working up a whole sort of scaffold to get paint on top of. Well, thank you, Brett. Um, I really appreciate your talk and hearing about your work. Um, I remember I want to give you an opportunity to your classes. Registration is still open, and if you're teaching, I'll let people know if they're interested in studying with you, what, what you're offering next semester. <laughs> sure. Um, I'm going to be offering an introduction of drawing course uh, on Tuesday and Thursday uh, mornings, and as well as a course called the Artist's Life, which um, will uh, explore some writing and uh, reading uh, excerpts of the various artists, but also hoping to utilize some Zoom conversations with artists and possibly make some studio visits or uh, even some local shows. And I'll be teaching introductory drawing on Tuesdays and Thursdays, as well as intermediate drawing on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Well, thank you both very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.